Hey guys, it's the Med Studio, and today we're going to be looking at otitis media. So this will include the symptoms as well as the pathology behind this disease. So what is otitis media? This is an infection of the middle ear that can eventually cause inflammation. Although anyone can develop a middle ear infection, infants are most commonly affected. It's estimated that around one in four children experience at least one middle ear infection by the time they're 10 years old. Symptoms of otitis media include earache, slight hearing loss, high temperature and being sick. However, infants are unable to clearly communicate. Some of their signs include pulling or tugging of the ear, irritability, coughing and even loss of balance. There are different types of otitis media, which we'll have a look at now. Acute otitis media and otitis media with effusion are the two main types of this pathology. Although very similar, otitis media with effusion means that the individual will have mucus or serous fluid in their tympanic cavity. Another key difference is that acute otitis media can show inflammation, but otitis media with effusion does not. In order to understand this process better, you'll need to have a good knowledge of the anatomy of the ear. So if you haven't already, please check out my previous video on the anatomy of the ear. And please remember to subscribe in order to help me make more content. So initially, an upper respiratory tract infection starts off the process. As this causes the immediate inflammation leading to swelling and edema. So this will impact the respiratory mucosa within the nose, nasopharynx and eustachian tube. As I've discussed in my previous video, the eustachian tube is the canal that connects the middle ear to the nasopharynx. So this congestion from the inflammation occludes the eustachian tube, causing increased negative pressure within the middle ear. And this means that there is no way for the fluid from the inflammation to escape, which results in increased accumulation within the middle ear. In over 70% of cases, this can resolve within a few days. However, there are other various outcomes. This includes how the increased pressure in the middle ear can cause bulging or even perforation of the tympanic membrane. Additionally, the accumulation of fluid can increase the likelihood of further secondary bacterial and viral infections in the middle ear, therefore leading to inflammation of the middle ear and hence acute otitis media. The release of systemic inflammatory cytokines can disrupt the hypothalamic thermoregulation system, which leads to fever. However, the residual fluid in the middle ear cavity can build up after having acute otitis media. And due to this increased fluid buildup, this leads to otitis media with effusion. This can be a cyclic process as the fluid can lead to recurrent acute otitis media. So we understand that children are more likely to have otitis media. So now let's have a look at why this is the case. The eustachian tube in children are shorter, more horizontal, with a slightly smaller passageway compared to an adult. This means that if there's an infection in the nasopharynx, it's easier for the infection to spread to the middle ear. The infection can also cause increased mucus secretion, which blocks the tube. Hence, the eustachian tube cannot open to replenish air in the middle ear and equalize the pressure. Other reasons include how children of a young age have a weaker immune response, so they're more vulnerable to infections.
So now let's have a little summary about everything that we've discussed in this video. Firstly, we had a look at the definition of otitis media, which is inflammation of the middle ear. Then we moved on to look at the symptoms of this condition, which included high temperature, earache and hearing loss. The symptoms can also be slightly different in infants. The two main types of otitis media includes acute otitis media and otitis media with effusion. Otitis media is usually caused by an upper respiratory tract infection, which leads to inflammation and eventually the two different types. Children are more prone to ear infections like otitis media due to the anatomical and physiological differences within their body compared to adults. And that brings us to the end of this video. Hope you guys found it really useful. Remember to like, subscribe and comment below. And follow me on Instagram at the Medstudier.